That was a tough one. Maryland goes down to Iowa 51 to 14. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Jack Rothenberg. You are watching the Big Dog post game show. And I have to tell you, I expected better. I actually predicted a Maryland win. Um, didn't, didn't see the multiple, multiple interceptions coming. Leah was not too sharp today. Jack, what'd you see out there? Yeah, I predicted a Terps win just like you. And through a quarter, I saw the Terps team that we all expected. But in that second quarter, everything just fell apart. And from there on out, it was a bad night for Maryland. It was. Um, Maryland's not as bad as the score indicates. Um, and when you lose 51 to 14, and seemingly, I'll channel my inner Mason, every time you get on national television at night, this happens. You can't rely on it. And every time we fall for it, much like Charlie Brown, Lucy, in that football, I always expect the ball's going to be there to be kicked, and it's my expectations that get stomped. Uh, this was not as bad as that Penn State game or the one from 1991. We lost here 70 to 7. Maryland actually was in this game and then the bottom fell out. And that was probably the worst two quarters of football I I can recall seeing. Uh, how about you? Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. It was, it was the fact that Leah would see receivers, whether we were talking off air, yeah. he would see the defenders or wouldn't see the defenders and would just decide to throw the ball when those receivers were not open at all. He was forcing the ball in many situations and it cost him five interceptions on the night and it, it didn't go well for mostly anyone. So. No, and before we had the break, there was that moment where Maryland was down 41 to seven, I believe it was 41 to seven, and you look up and Iowa only had a couple hundred yards. And what did you say up in the second quarter? Yeah, through, in the second quarter, they had four touchdowns for 91 yards. That kind of tells the story. That's Not too good. And the, the, uh, the early coup de grace to this was Dante Dimas getting injured, and that's probably the season for him. And clearly, was Leah's number one target. Might even been overused a bit in, in this game, but it was working. So I'm just going to choose to remember that it was seven to three at the end of the quarter, and and all things were good in College Park. We'll be back after this message. 25-20-15-10-5. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jackler Small Group. The big dogs from the small. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. As we wait for the Maryland band to start up behind us, uh, football things that we saw beyond interceptions and, and injuries. The one thing that really bothered me is when Iowa needed a yard or two, they lined up and went straight at Maryland. So you might say that the, the Big Ten size beef might need to be improved still a bit if you want to play with number five, Iowa. Uh, what, what stood out to you? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. The other thing that stood out to me was through the first quarter when Maryland was playing well on offense, it was all through the passing game. I believe they only had one or two rushes in that whole first quarter. And when things started to go wrong, especially for Leah, they didn't turn to the run game. They just kept throwing the ball, kept throwing the ball. So I'm interested to see if they start to use Town Fleet Davis a little bit more moving forward and, and the running game in totality. Hopefully they start to get back going in the future. Well, it doesn't get any easier from here. It's at Ohio State, 12 o'clock on national TV next week. So look, it was one game and it's just a football game. You can come back from this, still have your four wins, you win two more games, you still get to go to a bowl, and when you look back historically, you go, well, that was the first season Maryland went to a bowl in a while, and, and all things are well. Um, so I can't get overly upset because I didn't expect to go eight and four, or nine and three. We weren't going to the Rose Bowl this year. I, I just didn't want to get blown out, and once again, well, you don't always get what you want, huh? So for Bruce Posner, Mason back in the studio, that's Jack Rothenberg, I'm Wayne Viner. We're going and see what Coach Loxley has to say. I'm sure that'll be interesting. And uh, we will see you on the radio Wednesday night, Trip Talk on 1300 The Bet in Baltimore. Good evening from College Park.